in this video we are going to implement conditional gain in tensorflow so first let's import what we need and make sure to connect to gpu then import the fashion mnist dataset and let's reshape it to include that general dimension now uh, in case of conditional gain if you read the original paper they recommend that we should keep the batch size high so that's why we are going to keep the batch size to 400 in this case the batch size is going to be 400 and we are going to convert our data set or array basically to tensorflow data set and then we are going to batch it drop reminder and then repeat it and now let's define our noise shape the number of classes and these two terms will be used for our embedding layers in the generator and in the discriminator so in the generator the output dimensions of the embedding layer will be 32 this means we are going to provide an integer value like 0 or 1 or 2 or 9 and it will return us a 32 numbers vector and similarly the discriminator embedding dimensions will be 28 into 28 which is 768 because we need to reshape it back into 28 by 28 and this is going to be the generator code first of all we have the embedding layer the max length of categorical numbers will be 10 because we have numbers from 0 to 9 so embedding layer is going to expect a categorical value which is between the range 0 and 9 and then it will output a 32 numbers vector then we have the concatenation layer the dense layer reshape layer and rest of the code is same we have been learning about these lines of code since the first video now in case of discriminator again we have the embedding dimension and again it will expect a categorical value which is between the range 0 and 9 and it will output uh, this discriminator embed dimension which is 768 and once we have those levels then we are going to use this reshape layer in order to reshape that 768 into 28 by 28 so here as you can see the reshape size is 28 comma 28 comma 1 so 1 for the channel dimension and again rest of the code is very simple finally we are using this sigmoid activation function with dense layer because we are going to output either 0 or 1 either the image will be real or it will be fake I'm going to combine these two classes in this cgan class so firstly I'll pass my input which is going to be label and noise to the generator which is going to return me the fake images and then I'm going to pass that fake images along with the labels to the discriminator which will tell me whether it is fake or not now create an object of generator an object of discriminator uh, set the discriminator trainable to false we have been doing it since first video create an object of sequence then compile it with binary cross entropy and I'm going to use this RMS prop instead of Adam now this loss function and this optimizer is going to train our generator but for the discriminator I'm going to use this PCE which is again binary cross entropy and this optimizer discriminator in order to train my discriminator now let's put this BCE into a function and this function is going to accept y true and y pred which we will pass to BCE and it will return us a loss which we will return from this function the reason for doing this is that for example in the future we want to improve this BCE so all we need to do is to make changes in this function rather than writing the whole code from scratch again this is our utility function this is our trend discriminator function and some of the lines might look bit different to you and the reason for doing this is that 
for example if you watch some other youtube videos or take another gan course you should be familiar with all of different ways of writing code or training gans in tensorflow so that's why i am trying my best to introduce all the different ways of training gans in tensorflow and one of them is this way so let's go through line by line uh, first of all again batch and then for real one for fake zero we need the input for the generator so we are going to sample it from normal distribution and now in case of conditional gain along with the noise we also need to provide our input label for that noise so that's why i'm going to sample some labels from this uniform distribution which will return me the integer values and how many categorical values do i need so for each noise i need a single value so this means the number of values will be equals to batch size and what is going to be the minimum value it will be zero what will be the max value it will be 10 so but this 10 isn't going to be included uh, this zero is included but 10 isn't so it is going to generate values between zero and nine and then the data type is going to be int 32 because we want categorical values as we are going to pass them to the embedding layer which expect categorical values then we are going to pass these two information the noise the labels to the generator in order to get fake images now with the help of this gradient tab i am going to record the gradient of the discriminator bats with respect to the loss so i have used this width block and inside this width block first of all i am going to pass my fake class labels with fake images to the discriminator and it will return me the predicted score for that and then i'm going to pass the real class labels and real images so where i am getting these real class labels so i'm going to uh, get them along with these real images as an argument to this function and where do i'm getting that argument so as you can see along with importing my data set the images i'm also importing the labels for those images because those labels will act as real labels or real class labels for my real images so in the discriminator after passing fake images fake labels i'm going to pass my real images with real labels so by labels i don't mean uh, those labels okay these real and fake labels no it is the class labels okay and it is going to return me the prediction for the real images now this is a bit new way of doing things and then i'm going to use my bce loss function in order to calculate loss so i'm going to pass the fact prediction with fact labels so these fact labels are just zeros which we have generated right here and it is going to return me the loss for the fact and similarly i'm going to do it for the real labels it will return me the loss for real labels and then i'm going to add them and will multiply it with 0 0.5 and this will return me the total loss and with the help of this total loss i'm going to find the gradients of this discriminator dot trainable variables then i'm going to zip them and will pass them to the discriminator optimizer in order to optimize variables of discriminator so i hope uh, you have understood this training step let's run it and this function is the complete training of the gan so in this complete training gan first of all i need some validation data because i want to test my model during the training process so these two lines of code will generate me some validation input data for the generator and again i'm just sampling from a normal distribution but this time uh, i'm going to sample 10 examples and the noise shape is what we have defined above it is 128 and then for these random 10 samples i'm going to generate 10 labels from 0 to 9 so once model is trained we will see that our first image will correspond to label 0 and second image will correspond to label 1 and so on and so forth then i'm going to convert my data set 
into an iterable data set and this for loop is responsible for training so I'm going to pass number of steps it's like number of epoches but in GANs number of steps are used instead of epoches mostly with the help of this next function I'm going to take a batch from the data generator so remember we have used here this dot repeat function uh, this means we aren't going to get that out of data message if we reach the end of the data set then next time if I call the next function it is going to give me again the first batch so it's like we have created a circle of my batches so we aren't going to get any error and it will return me the real images along with class labels I'm going to find the batch size again I'm going to set the discriminator.trainable to true because with the help of this train discriminator I'm going to train my discriminator and I'm going to pass these real images along with these class labels uh, to the train discriminator in order to train the discriminator it will return me the loss fake and loss real which I'm going to call discriminator underscore loss again I'm going to add them will multiply it with 0 0.5 this is exactly what we did in the train discriminator function right here now I'm going to train the generator so I'll put the discriminator dot trainable to false again will sample the input from a random normal distribution and similarly some fake class labels and then some real labels so these are uh, my output labels basically so this is what I'm going to provide along with the noise and this is what our discriminator will output and using these three data I'm going to train the generator using this cgen dot train on batch and first of all this is going to be my input and this will be the output and again after every hundred steps I'm going to print the model performance and inside this if I also uh, have these two extra lines of code which will pass the validation class labels along with the validation random noise to the generator it will return us some fake images which I'm going to display so these two values are what we have written on the top of this function outside this for loop so that we could see the step by step progress of this GAN I train it for 5000 steps so this is going to like take 2 hours in order to train so training has been done and this is what I got finally now uh, let's match these 10 images with their respective labels so if you go to the Kaggle and find this fashion amnist uh, you can see here that this zero represent my t-shirt okay and here at index zero we have a t-shirt which looks very similar to a t-shirt because uh, in the validation data we are generating numbers or labels from zero to nine this means we have a sequence and the final outputs will be in that sequence so first t-shirt and then at one we have trousers and they look like trousers then we have pullovers and they look like pull pullovers although they aren't exactly pullovers and there is random noise between these generated images for example this looks more like a pullover uh, this one looks more like a pullover and then this final one isn't that good because we have the random noise and finally at label 9 we have a big shoe so let's see what do we have yeah we have ankle boot so it's look like an ankle boot so this means our conditional gain is working fine and obviously if you train it for longer epoches if you add more convolutional layers to the generator and to the discriminator the performance will be good and in the next video we are going to talk about image translations yeah image translation and i'll see you there bye bye